Page six. And seven. Thank you very much. Honorable members, do the minutes reflect our discussions? Honorable Ms. News for the adoption of the minutes. Come again. Honorable Mazzoni moves for the adoption of the minutes. Do I have a second, gentlemen and ladies? Um, Honorable, Speaker. Honorable Speaker. Um, yes. Oh. I had two voices simultaneously. Uh, Mema Jodina and Medla Kude. Mema Jodina, go first. Mema Jodina. Yes, Speaker, I second the, the adoption of minutes. Thank you, ma'am. Um, can we then go to Mr. Surprising? Honorable Speaker. That is seen. Thank you. Good morning to you and to colleagues. On page two, item page number two. five. Uh -huh. uh, the matter on section 25, is there any progress report? Because I believe that if there is a report from the committee, it will have to be taken to the House for adoption. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Castle, have we had any response from the committee? No, ma'am, not that I'm aware of, but House Chairperson Frolic could give an indication, except to say, ma'am, that uh, given that the term of the committee is expiring now in May, if it's not extended now, the House will have to re-establish the committee, of course, with the same mandate and membership um, when it is able to do so. Morana mm -hmm. uh, Frolik, are you around? Yes, good morning, Speaker. Good morning, sir. Please take How the floor. You? you look good today. You've got a good story to tell. <laughs> Grandmothers okay. always have good stories. Please continue with the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Good morning, honorable members. Um, the committee, the ad hoc committee, could not proceed with its work since the business of parliament was suspended in March. The committee will meet on Monday evening at 6 p.m. Um, so the members can do their constituency work during the day and then they will forward us uh, the report. Um, I thus concur with Mr. Caso that the committee will not be able to complete the work and that the uh, programming committee must take that into account so that one of the two options can be used, either to extend the mandate or reconstitute um, when the life of this committee expires. Thank you. Is that just saying that is the response? Yeah. Yeah, Honourable Speaker, if we get the report by uh, Monday, is it not possible that uh, the report be tabled uh, to the House when just before question session uh, for adoption by the House to extend the term? Is that not possible at all? Thank you. Um, it is a possibility. Let's look at it and let's get back to you um, just to see how the logistics of that will happen. So can we do that? Yes, ma'am, that is that is possible. Um, the majority that you, the quorum that you would need for that is a third of the members mm -hmm. uh, to be able to extend the term of the committee. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other matter arising, honourable members? Yes, Speaker. Is mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am, Kalipi. On page one, on the okay. matters arising. Mm -hmm. whereby Mr. Kasso reported that the speaker had written to the executive advising on the schedule on the visual question session set for 27 May. Is any formal confirmation regarding to this date? Dr. Kasso? Ma'am, the councillor to the leader of government business, David President, might come in on this, except say that as far as we know, the 27th of May is set for questions to the executive, cluster two and three. We have not had anything to the contrary from the executive on this matter. Thank you. 
Um, th that's my understanding that uh, I do not have a formal letter in front of me, but there is an understanding and undertaking that the 27th of May is set. So maybe in Tate Castle we must um, get a little paper just to be on the safe side. We'll, Madam we'll Speaker, proceed. it's Honourable Mazzoni. Honourable Mazzoni? Madam Speaker, I'm not sure if I should ask this question now or under the program, so I'm guided by you. But the clustering of these two of these two sections together, uh, obviously, they're incredibly important questions that we will be posing to the executive. Um, mm -hmm. I see that the, the question paper was released uh, yesterday, I believe. And um, the, the time allocation is it hasn't been adjusted at all. Is there a reason that uh, we, we, we're limiting the, the time? And is there no, that, no way that we could put an extension of the time to ensure that, uh, given the fact that we, we're clustering two clusters together, we could make the question session uh, longer to accommodate more questions to the executive? Honourable members, we agreed on the clustering. Yes. Agreed. I do not recall whether we actually pondered on the, the time allocated for the clustering. I think in my mind we assumed that we would take the usual time, but mm. I need to be advised on this. Ma'am, um, when we made the presentation on this matter, we did state that uh, the time would be three hours, the document that we presented to the NAPC. Our understanding was that the NAPC agreed to both the combination of the clusters uh, to the date and also to the time, the time uh, allocation. That was our understanding, certainly. Okay. Uh, well, Ms. Mazzoni, if that was our understanding at that meeting, is that everybody's recollection, honorable members? Honorable Speaker? Honorable Speaker? Uh, Med Lakude and uh, Chief Whip decide who comes in. Oh, let me allow the Chief Whip to come in. Yeah, May Chief Whip. Th thank you very, very much. You, uh, Mr. Castle is correct. Uh, that is how we have agreed. However, what uh, Honorable Mazon is raising, uh, can we consider it in our next meeting uh, if we're still going to have this um, interim arrangement of combining the, the, the two clusters? Yes, uh, at the moment, for the 27, let's, let's, let's keep that three hours, but uh, that's a, a matter to be discussed in terms of extension. Thank you. Member Zoni, does that uh, respond to your question? That uh, it, it in any case, it would be too late for now to try and extend the time because um, if we have communicated that the sitting, the virtual sitting for questions will be three hours, then people have prepared themselves for the three hours. Um, and if you want to extend, you are going to then cause um, a disruption in other plans so that not only the members, ourselves, but the executive may have entered into. So I think that the recommendation by Member Jodina is worth us considering that at the next uh, 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 programming, we consider extending the next clusters question sessions if we will still be in this uh, arrangement. Madam Speaker, I'm very happy with that, and I'm very glad to see our uh, our finding of each other is is back on the table again. Mm, thank you very much. Is there any other matter arising, honourable members? Honourable Speaker. Dada Singh. Singh, I didn't realise we had lost each other, but we we on track. <laughs> uh, just on the question of the appointment of the Auditor General. Uh, yeah. I did some homework last night looking at some old documents, and I'm sure Mr. Frolic is aware. Uh, when we did the appointment in 2013, by the 2nd of August, the advertisement had gone out. So I think the appointment of the ad hoc committee needs to be considered sooner rather than later, so that they can constitute, start preparing the advertisements, etc., and be on time for uh, a new Auditor General in December to take over. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we agree, Honorable Majorina, please hurry up on that um, because we have already started the ball rolling. We are waiting for parties to come back to us on the recommendations for the committee. That's all we are waiting for at this stage. 
can speak as the SWAT chair when you. Yes, 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 Mr. Jaswar. Um, one other issue arising. Um, I'm sorry, have you dealt with that issue or can I mention another issue? You can come in on the issue you want to raise because on the one raised uh, by Ndade Singh, we are simply waiting for the names to come from parties to to formalize the the the, the other committee. Um, issue oh, was, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, may I come in on that honourable spot? Uh, yeah. Just to say, uh, I haven't seen any correspondence, but possibly it's on the way. Thank you. It's possibly on the way. Um, should have been on the way by last week. Um, thank you, okay. Madam. I'll await it, honourable speaker. Thank you. Thank you. I just wish to raise, um, raise the issue of the discussion we had about constitutional court judgments and the possibility of a meeting with the Chief Justice and the Speaker, just to um, mention that the Office of the Chief Justice met with the Justice Committee the past week with their strat plan, and it was raised there as well. And the Chief Justice will, um, is open to a meeting with the Justice Portfolio Committee and um, obviously, from your side as the speaker, you might at the opportune moment wish to have a meeting with him to discuss the issues arising from the complications of adhering to the constitutional court deadlines, which are very firm um, and sometimes various things we're not able to comply with. Department, and that was an issue. So I just wanted to do, um, give you that feedback as well with the discussion of the, with the Office of the Chief Justice, which is a separate department to the Chief Justice. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Deswart. We will avail ourselves to that opportunity and uh, come back to you. But in the meantime, um, we must not lose um, any time to continue processing. But I will, I will definitely make arrangements to sit with the Chief Justice. Mm -hmm. Honourable Speaker. Yes, sir. Uh, Honorable Speaker, the Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Justice and Correctional Services, the Honorable Magwanishe, has informed me of the discussion that took place in the Portfolio Committee, and the Chairperson is sending correspondence with regards to this matter to the Speaker for such a meeting to take place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tifroli. Honorable Madam. Members, is there any other? The difference is still who wants to come in? Oh, it's Klaso, ma'am. That is Klaso. Two other issues, ma'am, that are arising from the minutes is the matter of mini plenaries. And I understand that Honorable Frolic will deal with it. I do not know whether under this item or under the program, I just thought I must raise it. Secondly, the issue of how many members should we prepare for, for next week. It was raised at the last meeting and no conclusion was reached. So we will need a decision on that. Um, how many members are coming to the sitting next week on the 27th? Okay. Thanks, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Honorable members, uh, Dr. Frolik, are you available to respond to what Dr. Castle is saying you should brief us on? Yes, indeed, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, I, yesterday I indicated in the meeting of the Chief Whoops Forum that we will distribute the, uh, the discussion and the proposal from the presiding officers as far as this matter is concerned, you will recall that the Chief's Whips made lengthy inputs into the document from Dr. Kuwarnov. The presiding officers have decided that the preferred option is the one as indicated in the document that we do not have mini plenaries this time around so that we can process the appropriation bill as it was tabled in February by the Minister of Finance. The sooner we process the appropriation bill, then the Minister will be able to table the adjustment appropriation bill. We thus propose that many plenaries not be held and consideration rather be given to a comprehensive first reading debate on the appropriation bill followed by declaration on the individual budget votes by the political parties. Most of the portfolio committees are now approaching the end of their deliberations and discussions of the budget votes within their portfolio. We further then 
indicated that a virtual sitting will be held and the first reading debate on the appropriation bill will take place, which is currently 90 minutes. This would be followed by declaration on each of the votes in the schedule with a global time allocation of 200 minutes. The bill would then be put for second reading without further debate, as is the practice. Honorable Speaker, in the office of the political office bearers, we indicated as House Chairpersons responsible for committees, that is the Honorable Nyambi and myself, that the same procedure will be followed in the Council of Provinces where they will have, have no policy debates uh, on the appropriation bill as it currently stands, so that we can allow political parties to really get into the nuts and the bolts of the adjustment appropriation bill. And we are open for further discussion as to how this process, in terms of the adjustment appropriation bill, will proceed. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Um, is there any comments on, on this? Honorable Mazzoni? Mazzoni. Mente. Mazzoni. Mente. Swat. 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 Um, did I hear your name? Yes, it's Swat. Yes. yes. Mbalipi, speaker. Speaker. Mbalipi, yes. Um, Member Zoni, please proceed. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you to Mr. Frolic for a very comprehensive document. Uh, Honourable Frolic, I do agree with, with what you set out because it, it does make sense and it does ensure that we get through this process uh, quickly enough to ensure that the, the COVID relief budget is then brought uh, before the House. I, I just need uh, one, one item of clarity. I'm, I'm quite happy with the way we've proposed uh, going forward. I'm happy with the distribution of minutes for the first reading debate. I'm happy with the declarations. But do we then have a firm and, and hard understanding that when the COVID uh, relief adjustment budget comes, that we will then have uh, many plenaries on that particular uh, COVID relief budget. Because, of course, we can't go through a period where we have uh, absolutely uh, no many plenaries on the debate. So I'm assuming that the many plenaries are taken away now because we need to pass this budget to ensure that we can go into our COVID relief budget and that when that COVID relief budget comes, that is the time that we will go into our mini plenary phase. Okay. Memente. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, speaker, uh, thank you, uh, House Chair. No, we agree with the proposal. We don't have a problem with it. However, 90 minutes time, uh, we can welcome some extension of the time from six, perhaps eight minutes, as you have <laughs> proposed. And um, in terms of the... COVID relief budget and its amendments thereof, are they going to be tabled again to committees after this once the adjustment is tabled and then before they are taken to many plenaries or are they already included in the strat plans and the APPs currently? Just want to check that. And then secondly, I want to check then what will then be the day, the new dates. You did not include them in your proposal that what dates do we then have to look into having the 2nd June on the initial um, arrangement of the budget. So what will be the new date so that we prepare ourselves? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. No, Honourable Speaker, we have got no problem with the principle that we don't have many plenaries, provided, as the, uh, my two colleagues have said, that we have a comprehensive uh, mini plenary and discussions with the Minister and the committee after the COVID uh, amended budget is presented. Also, uh, Honourable Speaker, that when we look at these adjusted strategic plans and APPs, taking into consideration the COVID-related adjustments, we will have a debate on the entire vote and not just the adjustment part as we normally do. 
Because normally with an adjustment, we just speak to the adjustments. But here there must be an understanding that will speak to everything within that vote. Uh, if that's an understanding, we've got no problem. I have a bit of a uh, uh, question and a challenge on item two of Honorable Frolic's document, which says that there, we would have declarations on each vote. Now, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, if we've got 40 votes and we have declarations on each vote, and you're giving parties 10 minutes, uh, that might be a bit prob as a global time, because then you would have to choose which votes you declare on. I think this schedule has been prepared when we have the consideration of votes and schedules to ask questions. Normally, we have a global time to ask any particular question from any vote. But for declarations, I mean, there's a specific rule which talks about declarations. And perhaps we need to relook at this time and whether or not we allow declarations if parties want to declare up to maybe two minutes uh, on each vote. So I'm just putting that for consideration because I want to separate that principle of declarations from consideration of votes uh, and schedules when you ask just pointed questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I think I'm covered by the latter speakers, but I think it's important indeed to to have a resolution perhaps in this meeting that, that indeed says that confirms that during the adjustment process we will have uh, many plenaries. Obviously, I'm sure when we pass the budget in the House, people can still to a large extent be confined to the adjustments process to speak directly to the adjustments but the the mini plenaries will a political debates and policy debates people can debate anything they want thank you thank you sir uh, deputy chief whip of the majority thanks uh, good morning uh, colleagues uh, let me take this opportunity to welcome the presentation made by uh, Honorable Frolic and also to say that as the ANC will support that uh, we deal with the allow committees to deal with the APPs and the draft plans as they are currently doing now, then we deal with the budget, the budget is tabled in the house and we go for declarations. I hear what uh, Honorable Singh is saying with regard to declaration of votes and also the, with regard to the global time. I would suggest that uh, with regard to that, if we can, as Chief Whips Forum, maybe be given time to go and relook at this. But declaration will be a way to go and also that we we deal with the with the adjusted bu budget uh, more vigorously when it comes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And that is what. Thank you, Speaker. And yes, thank you, Mr. Frolic. We are supportive of the proposals not to have the uh, many plenaries, but then obviously I share Mr. Singh's. Have concerns about the global time for the declarations. If we don't have many plenaries, then the normal rule should apply for declarations that every party should have a, a an amount of time to make their declarations. And I support the Deputy Chief Whip that we should then discuss this in the Chief Whip's forum um, to take it further. Because my understanding is the rule, the normal rule should then apply for declarations per party. Obviously, not every party is going to speak on every budget vote, but I do think we need to relook at that 10-minute globular time. Uh, given the fact that we are conceding not to have many plenaries, and the main focus will be on the adjusted budget, which we fully support. Thank you. Thank you. The, my last is Mem Kalip. Mem Kalip. <coughs> Speaker, thank you very much, Speaker. On the mini plenaries, I think the national chairperson of the EFF have spoken about it. We don't have a problem. We are great. But the one that uh, Mr. Castle have raised to say that we have not concluded on the number of people who will be physically in the assembly on the 27th of May. And, and if I remember correctly, Speaker, last week we also 
uh, spoke about what are we going to use between the Microsoft Teams and Zoom. And we couldn't get uh, a clear indication. And the Honorable Frolic said that uh, because there will be a presentation in the Chiefs Forum, Indeed, it took place yesterday. So now we have to conclude on that matter, which, which platform are we going to use uh, on the 27th of May, as well as to get a clear direction if we are going to use Zoom or if we are going to use Microsoft Team, how many people will be connected uh, visually? Because all those details need to be taken to our caucuses to prepare our members of parliament for the, for the day. Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Um, Speaker, may I say something, please? Dr. Mulder speaking. Dr. Mulder, please no, take this. Thank you, no, thank you, ma'am. No, I would say that we would obviously support the proposal by Mr. Uh, Frolic with regard to the penuries and the way that we're going to deal with the original budget. <clears throat> I just also want to have confirmation that we will then definitely have penuries when it comes to the appropriate mm -hmm. second part of the budget, the adjusted budget. Mm -hmm. The problem with the proposal that we use the ordinary rule when it comes to declarations. If you make the calculation and you take the maximum time, you are talking about 18 hours, 1,120 minutes. That's also not realistic. So I understand that we need perhaps more time for declarations, but we must find it. Out. It comes to the beautiful music. When it comes to the number of people to attend the first session, I would suggest that we stick to 50 for the first uh, Dr. Mulder, please hold a little bit. But, uh, whoever it is whose phone is ringing, please mute. It's definitely not mine. Somebody needs to mute their mic. Their, their mic please. Dr. Mulder, please proceed. No, ma'am, I'm, I'm finished. I'm, I'm just suggesting that uh, when, it, when we talk about the numbers for the first session, I, I would suggest that we start off with 50 and see how it goes. We can always increase that after we've had a first attempt. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that Frolik and the Secretary to the National Assembly, you have the floor to respond. No, thank you, Honourable Speaker, and may I express my appreciation for the the spirit in which we have dealt with this matter. Of course, honorable members, from the outset, we were very, very clear that when the adjustment appropriation bill is tabled by the Minister of Finance, the strategic plans and the annual performance plans of the different departments must be updated, and it must be taken back to the committee, and it must be interrogated there. So we undertake that that process will be followed. And then I'll also make a very firm proposal to the speaker uh, who decides ultimately on mini plenaries, on the uh, discussions that must happen. We understand that it's business unusual, honourable members. And the additional time that we must as a parliament spend on debating the adjustments that will take place will stand the institution to good stead when it comes to exercising effective oversight on the spending of those adjusted budgets. So mini plenaries in those specific votes is definitely a proposal that I will make to the speaker on how to proceed with that. It is very important that we do have debates around those adjustments. Then the um, Honorable Mente raised the, the issue of more time. Currently, the debate that precedes the different uh, declarations of vote is 90 minutes. Um, and... Um, I heard what the Honorable Mulder have said is absolutely correct. If we just increase the time there, then it will really defeat the purpose why we want to conclude this process the way that we are proposing. May I request, Honorable Speaker, that the Secretariat under the leadership of Mr. Castle work on proposals after this meeting. I'll work with them that we'll present to you and that that will also take to the um, Chief Whips in the Chief Whips Forum when it comes to debating times. Um, I think I've covered the Honourable Singh and the Honourable Dakuda, but once again, thank you very much, Honourable Members. Working together, we can achieve so much more. Um, do you want to add anything, Dr. Castle? Ma'am, just to, on the issue of declarations of vote, I just wanted to, to quote the, the Rule 108, 
rule five. This is what will inform the discussion on this. It says when the budget votes in the schedule to the main appropriation bill are to be decided upon, declarations of vote, if requested, must be limited to a total time for all the budget votes, as well as proportional time per party, um, as allocated for that purpose by program committee. That is why you need a global time. So, and, and you, you, we don't use the two minutes each anymore because of this rule. But the matter will be will be refined within the Chief Whips Forum. Thank you. Yes, please go refined. Come back to us early enough for us to be able to take a decision that will enable us all to work better. Is there any other matter arising, Hon Honourable Member? Honourable Speaker, if if I may, Honourable yes, Speaker, yes. there's other uh, items that was brought up by the Honourable Kalipi, and it deals yes. with the number of members in the chamber, as yes. well as platform to be used. I don't know if you want to speak to that or must I uh, respond to those matters? Well, on the platform um, to be used, honorable members will remember what we went through. We've looked at the two available systems, platforms for now. Uh, and uh, we had a meeting with the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces um, to say for now and until we get a resolution on which system we want to permanently be on, we will use Zoom for, for that simply because Zoom carries, will enable us to carry a larger number of members on the platform. Um, we are still awaiting the investigation in Zoom, um, and we are also looking at other options uh, other than the two Microsoft team and Zoom. So when we have gone through the options that are on our table, we will come back and inform honorable members accordingly. But for this coming sitting, we will definitely be using Zoom. And Dr. Frolik, is there anything else I'm leaving out? No, Speaker, you are absolutely correct. Um, uh, just to reinforce what you're saying is that the reason why we are going to use Zoom is because of the number of participants that can participate in Zoom. MS Teams is limited at this stage under our current licensing agreement to 250 members. And Zoom has a platform of 500. So that is the key reason why we're moving towards Zoom. And we will keep the different forums informed as we go along. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Honorable members, if there is no other matter arising. Uh, speaker. Yes, Ndadi Julius. Uh, thank you, Speaker. <coughs> Just on page 16, um, I thought we were discussing today, it was discussed in the people forum, uh, the issue of the 100 members in the House or the 50 members in the House. Um, I just like an indication or a discussion with me on it, uh, uh, Peter, because I feel that um, if they gave us the, the, the amount of 100 members allowed in the House with the specifications or the rules or compliance with the COVID-19 rules, um, I think we should go with the 100. It's already in the public domain that um, members of parliament, if we want children to go back to school, children and teachers, we should equally go back to parliament. Now, I'm not saying that we all should go to parliament. Within the confinement of the rules, we are allowed 100 members. I don't see why we should stick to 50 members. It will give an indication to the public that we do not want to go back to parliament. If we speak to the 100 members, um, members in the public might be satisfied that we are going back to parliament that, and, and within the confinement of the 100 members allowed. That's, the, that's what, what we were given. Social distancing allow us to have 100 members in the house. Can you quickly discuss that? Thank you, Peter. Is this a new, you say we must quickly discuss this? Um, as an item, 
no, no, no. it's in the minutes it's a rising from the minutes stage 16 it's a matter of rising okay you yes. almost uh, had me thinking you want to use a new topic and that the thing your hand was up ma'am kalipi your hand was up thank you very much uh, uh, and um, honorable speaker my hand is up thank you. please that is thank you very much Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Mr. So speaker, I don't know why we have a fixation with numbers. Uh, I mean, we just said 50, we said 100. I, I said yesterday we shouldn't have a fixation with numbers. We must do what is possible. And it's not possible for Mr. Julius or myself to get to Cape Town on the 27th of May because travel restrictions would not allow us to be there. So let us appeal to our members in our own political parties who can be there. And whatever the number is, let it be so, as long as it's not more than 100, because that's a regulatory health requirement. And let's see how it goes. So Honorable Julius, that is what I'm proposing. Let's see how the first session goes. And then we take it from there, because we really can't travel either through domestic air or uh, by, by road. Thank you. Ma'am Kalipi? Yes, Honourable yes, Speaker. Yesterday we had discussed. Yes, this is not a new discussion. It started on the Chief's Forum. It came here last week. And it seems as if we are also uh, trying to discuss one single issue of 50 stroke 100. And we said in the Chief's Forum, let us look on other issues that also linked to this 50 stroke 100. Because as Honorable Singh is saying, other members are not in Cape Town. And it will be unfair to say that those only those members who are in Cape Town, they must go to parliament. This issue needs to be broadened, Speaker, to be discussed in such a way that it allows other things such as transport, such as accommodation issue. And uh, I don't know now why are we also on this very same issue, because we spoke about it in the Chief's Forum. The thing that we need to get a clarity on, because I asked earlier on, are we using Zoom, are we using Microsoft Team? And the speaker we just said that, no, we are going to continue with the Zoom. So the next thing is to say, how many people will be connected? Because there was also a proposal from Honorable Singh to say that there must be a number of people who must be connected, and other people, they must watch it on 408. So we must also conclude on that one. My understanding, Speaker, is that when we discussed here, we have to take all discussions back to our uh, caucuses in order for our members to know what exactly will happen. And May 27, it will be next week on, the, on, on, on Wednesday. So our meeting of the programming will take place on Thursday. So all things must be ironed out now before the chief whips, which will be already late in order to communicate with members. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I have Honorable Tlakude. No, Honorable Mulder first. Mente as well, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. No, uh, Honorable Kalipi and Honorable Singh is correct. The problem is this. We, we, because of the current travel restrictions, we, it's unlikely that we can have 100 people in Cape Town. But on the other hand, we do need a figure because the administration needs to prepare the chamber and to need how many people are going to be there. And parties will have to let Parliament know which members will attend so that they have got the names because members are not going to sit in their usual benches. The chamber has to be prepared. And that's why I'm preparing. Let's start with 50. It sends a signal to the public that we are doing our job. The rest of the members can be uh, uh, involved in terms of a virtual meeting. And after we've sorted that out, we can then increase depending on how the thing develops. Thank you. Thank you. Ned Lakude? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I think Honorable uh, Malda uh, covered me. Yes, we discussed this matter in the Chief Whips Forum, and the agreement was that we start with 50. We cannot go more than uh, 50 to more than 50 members. So that is what we discussed. We consulted each other in that uh, meeting. Then on the connect on on how many members should be connected to 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 virtually, I think that uh, our sittings are uh, cannot be restricted when it comes to connection uh, virtually. But what we agreed upon is that parties must submit names for those members who will be making uh, follow up questions. 
and also that it should it will be managed by the administration in that regard and also what uh, it was what was brought in the chief whips forum was that uh, parties also should indicate on the languages they would want interpretation on that must be submitted uh, before friday or on friday this week thank you Thank you. Memento, you are the last. Uh, speaker, I also yes, have my hand yes, up. Uh, Honorable Sangwini, just before Honorable Mente, my hand was up, uh, Speaker. Mente, I did not hear your voice. I did not see your hand. I saw, I heard the voice of my Mente. Therefore, I recognize yes, my Mente. Okay, now I did, I did raise my hand. It's fine. <coughs> Members, um, if I don't see your hand on my screen and I don't see, hear your voice, I cannot know. So, Memente, you have the floor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Speaker. Uh, speaker, two things. One, uh, we made a proposal to your office. We also made the same proposal to the Chief of Forum yesterday that in the interim, the parliament can be relocated to Pretoria and utilize uh, Pretoria as a center and parliament. The rules uh, and regulations do allow, do permit you and the uh, executive to make such a rule to move parliament in the interim because members of parliament that are in Cape Town currently, to start off, with are very few. In the EFF, we only have three members that are here. Two have, in fact, all three of them have underlying issues. And then two, Cape Town is an epicenter uh, speaker. If you come to Cape Town, everyone who comes to Cape Town then becomes a member of the community of the Western Cape, where the infection rate is extremely high and the death rate is also escalating. Therefore, to at least uh, minimize the infection rate can we use to utilize pretoria in the interim until we figure out what will happen with the infection rate and the death rate of the western cape that will also allow all members in fact almost six provinces that can drive into pretoria and drive out very quickly and easy without incurring extra cost of accommodation and anything. Those that are traveling from KZ and Limpopo, they really cannot drive to Cape Town on one day and then go back to KZ and Limpopo, even Gauteng. It's more than 1.4 kilometers to drive to Gauteng. Myself, Eastern Cape is more than 1,100 kilometers to go to Ekofimbab. So on those basis, we made that proposal speaker which the Chief Whips Forum yesterday promised that they will take to your or to you a uh, good honorable self and consider it. Secondly, Speaker, um, the issue of uh, numbers that Metla could have raised in terms of 50. Yes, the regulations, they do ask for 50, but let's look at what is happening currently. The economy is opened, mines are operating, they don't have 50 members. They have more members on the floor, on the floor, on underground. Those that are at the factory floors, supermarkets, and everywhere that are open, they have more people than 50. So for Parliament to stick to 50, simple because the regulations are saying 50. I think our legal um, department is also failing us in that regard. There, there are other sectors that are operating with more than 50 people on the floor each and every day. Therefore, to say 50 members to come must go to parliament is also not a true reflection of what the regulations are seeking to achieve. I think because parliament has got 400 members, then there is a flexibility in that regard to allow parliament to have more than 50 people because we operate as 490 collectively in parliament. Um, lastly, uh, Speaker, I do not know if you have responded to our letter that was sent to your office. We would appreciate your response re uh, pertaining the issue of the relocation in the interim as, mu as much as 
we all want to go back to work, but the traveling and the accommodation and everything for the 27th is going to be a problem. And many parties think IFP also has one member, and we cannot also force members to go to parliament, especially those that have underlying issues, knowing very well what is at stake. Thank you very much. I will respond to you, Mayor Mente. I think Mayor Ntlangwini and Mayor Mazoni said they had raised their hands. I'll take those two hands, and then we can move to responses. Um, Swart as well, Speaker, I'm sorry. That is Swart, so you'd be the last. Yes, those last three hands, please. Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. I think I'm um, well covered by Honorable Mente, uh, Speaker. Um, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Memazoni? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, there's a, a fundamental misunderstanding and a, an attempted manipulation of our Constitution. Uh, that's at play here, which I think is deeply unfortunate given the fact that we are in the midst of a crisis and a, and a pandemic that's affecting our entire country. I think it's also a gross contradiction to make the point that mines are operating and the economy is opening up, and yet uh, the, the member does not want parliament to open up and, and do its work in parliament. Now, let us not be uh, naive and not think that parliament is just about 400 members of parliament. There are, is an entire contingent of parliamentary staff that operate at the seat of government, which the constitution says is located in Cape Town. And these people cannot simply be moved up to Gauteng or to Pretoria, as suggested. Um, it is nothing more than a, a very poorly disguised political play that's been going on for some time that is now being exasperated and, and quite frankly, misused during the time of the COVID crisis. Now, if we are saying that, uh, you, you know, we, we, were, we are working in this hybrid system, I do tend to agree that perhaps if, if we are getting bogged down by, by numbers such as 50 or 100 and people are being offended by the number of 50 or 100, we have to look at the practicality of the situation. So why not allow political parties to act like adults and allow the members of parliament that, that belong to political parties to act like adults and to decide for themselves who can be in the House and who can't be, certainly not force anyone to come to parliament and certainly not allow or encourage anyone with underlying problems to come to parliament. But it could be a situation where you had you could have 80 people coming to Parliament, you could have 40 people coming to Parliament, depending on what the practicality of the situation is. How we get around that, I agree with Honourable Mulder, is quite simple. The political parties will indicate to the, to the National Assembly table what members of their parties are available to be present in the House and who will be available to be on the virtual platform. Um, so, Speaker, I would like to put that proposal forward, that we leave it to political parties to be organised by their chief whips, and that chief whips indicate to the National Assembly table which members of the political parties will be available to be in the House um, as, as an adult and responsible and constitutional decision that we make as, the chief, as this uh, particular chief whips forum. Um, then, Speaker, we must also not forget that we have a, a media contingent who are also very much part of our parliamentary family. And uh, I would like to know from the National Assembly table, uh, how will the media contingent be uh, allowed to join uh, the platforms uh, to observe? Or, or are they simply going to be observing the platforms on a virtual from the virtual platform? Or will the media, media gallery be uh, opened uh, you know, with the necessary COVID um, social distancing, uh, because I think it's important for all members of, of the parliamentary family, which include our staffing component and the media component, to know exactly where they stand with us. Thanks very much. Thank you. Dr. Swart, you're the last. Speaker, thank you very much. I think this whole debate needs an extensive investigation into this. It was raised for the first time yesterday in the Chief of the Forum, that the possibility of meeting elsewhere after we had deliberated for weeks on end about the next week's hybrid meeting. So I do, I indicated that it is something one can look in the long term if it's necessary, but for now, now suddenly it's about for next week, which is unacceptable. 
we have already decided about next week the issues relating to sitting elsewhere. I appreciate that. But the modeling is showing that the infection is going to spread throughout the country. So I think to say that purely because Cape Town is the epicenter, and I do appreciate Honorable Mentor concerns that we need to limit the spread of the infection. But I do think there are massive implications. This, this cannot be just a decision that is taken here. We need to understand the implications with staff, with hosting, with a number of other things. And I do appreciate the fact that we need to be very sensitive. But I made the point yesterday very clearly that unbeknown to myself, I had the virus. I spoke at a joint sitting of parliament. I would have avoided it had I known I had the virus. I spoke on the 13th of March at a joint sitting. I spoke to people, came and sat next to me in my benches on a number of occasions. When I was tested positive, I phoned every one of them. And thankfully, none of them were positive. They were all negative. So yes, we need to we take our concerns and we need to be conscious of our health factors. But now to suddenly bring in um, that we're going to sit in Pretoria or elsewhere, I indicated that is an option we can look at. We need to get Parliament as quickly as possible, operating as quickly as possible. It is not something we would support for next week. It's clearly untenable. We need to get as many people in Parliament so people can see it. And I remember Mr. Papu saying very clearly, and I support it, that we cannot be dominated by fear. We need to understand the risks of the infection, but we need the public to see as many people as possible in Parliament with taking due hygiene and health protocols. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Swart. Honourable members, we are engaging with the National Command, with the Presidency, on the movement Mr. of... Speaker, the can... um, I've raised my I hand have... and then I've also... No, I had exhausted my list. And honourable oh, members... I raise... Who is this? I raised my... I raised my hand earlier and even said on the chat group that can you please note me. Who is it? It's Floyd. Dr. Floyd, when I counted and I went to Dr. Swartz, I was very clear that it was the last. I honestly, even before I you said not, that, I did. You are not on my platform. I had not heard your voice. And therefore, I did, because I can't see you on my platform, I did not know you were even in this meeting. So please, please speak before I oh, yeah. of this matter. No, yeah. Quickly, Speaker, it is not true that the seat of government is kept on. It's a seat of the legislature. And, and of course, the Constitution says that. But the Powers and Privileges Act permits you, as the Speaker, or even the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, to declare any land in South Africa to be a principle of parliament. And we're raising the issue of the temporary relocation to a central space because when we are now needed to go to Cape Town, it now involves majority of the times air travel. And air travel is not about to open now. And you can't say we must drive to Cape Town. Now, Houting is the most central place Dr. and majority Floyd, of members of the in access. Yes. Dr. Floyd, the matter you are canvassing was canvassed by Memente. So if, you, if there is something she left out, please come to it. But yes, she not, actually spoke, addressed that. us very long, on a long term, on, on, took time to, to explain to us why and why for we must relocate to, uh, to, to Johannesburg, to Gauteng. But please yes, proceed. Now the issue that, yes, the issue that we want to say is that, can we put it as part of the considerations and options, like, and, then, and then get the relevant authorities, either public works, to explore that if we were to gather in Houting, what are the possibilities? What is possible and, and, and how can we handle that? Instead of narrowing our focus to want to necessarily convene in Cape Town, even when there's practical impossibilities of travel and difficulties that come with it in the current context. So let's look into it as part of the options so that we, we, we are able to take a better decision when we're presented with now material proper sense of what, 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 what we can do 
in that particular regard. Thank you. May I respond to you, honorable members, all of you? Firstly, you are right. The powers and privileges do give us the, the authority to designate any piece, any venue as precinct. Um, and yes, if we consider it important, if we consider it as a last option, we will do so. We have not yet, for the record, Ndadi Floyd, received any letter from the EFF. I've just checked with Mr. Castle. We have not received the letter you are saying we have received advising us to relocate temporarily to, to Houthi. So perhaps it is still in the pipeline. We will consider that option. Honorable members, you are saying that, um, you know, we must look at 50, we must look at 100. For your recollection, we started with 40, we moved to 50, we moved to 100, we went back to 50. Even as we started discussing this matter, you know, what irritates me, honorable members, and I'm very sorry to use this word, but it does irritate sometimes when members of political parties forget the situation we are in. We're not in this situation because there are heroes and, and cowards. We're in this situation because we've got a state of national disaster. I would ask members to go and look at what other countries do when they are in a state of national disaster, when they are in the state of defense, where they are at war. Because then we will begin to start thinking of putting people first. When we started off discussing with uh, 40 or 50 in the chamber, my position was, honorable members, we may get 40, we may get 50, we may even get 200 members there. But as the presiding officer, I am not going to force anybody who says to me, I am one at the risky category, I am not prepared to risk my life there because I am not going to force members into the house and be liable. That one, I want to tell you categorically, I'm not going to do. Secondly, members who are able to attend to the sitting, let them indicate through their parties so that the administration can make the necessary arrangement. Our last discussion, if honorable members remember, we said, the numbers, let's look at the numbers because the chamber is big enough to do the two meter requirement. So we can take numbers as long as we are clear, we, can, we, we, we are at safety. The regulations cannot be read to suit us. The regulations as they stand now say there is no interprovincial movement allowed. In that regard, we have written to ask whether parliament are exempt to move between provinces. Precisely because we're beginning to get this pressure. One, I want to go every day to go and do my constituency. I want to travel and do oversight across the province into the next province. So we've had to approach. They have not yet come back to us. When they have done so, we will go back to you because we are, we are seeking legal advice on this one. I think it would not serve as good to say that we are above the general public. But it will also not serve us enough to say that we are going to risk and break the rules simply because we are members of parliament. And that is why we have taken the liberty of getting legal advice and consulting with this national command on these issues to see how we can allow for movements, to see if and how, when we reopen, because we have also said to the public, we will also open parliament incrementally. It means we do not think that even when we open, we are simply going to all in one full soup, have 400 members in the house. We are going to do what South Africa does, incrementally get back there. We are doing that. We have our uh, uh, business uh, uh, plan, which says even the staff of parliament will do so incrementally. Now, if, the, if we get to a situation where we have to look and designate any central area as a temporary parliament, honorable members will come back to you and say, we are concluding on this. But I do know that 
even before COVID-19, the EFF has been saying to us, relocate, you can relocate. We will do that when we have looked at all the matters. But I think that we should not be fudging issues here. We should be saying what is practicable for us to do as MPs. What can we do to show South Africans that for once we can be united in holding the executive to account? So I am not, Mr. Floyd, going to ask the public works to tell me how to designate and which and what and what. Because in the past, when Parliament, when either of the houses has designated an area, it was not a business of public works. It was a decision taken by us to say, we are in this, we are designating this as a precinct of Parliament and therefore. So I'm not going to, to, to say yes or no. I am saying I'm listening. And as and when it is practicable, we will do that. So members, I would really beg that we begin to work together on this. Party leaders, if you can indicate to us how many of your members are there, but please don't ask me, don't ask Ms. Kiawa to write a permit to give you permission to travel across the provinces because by now, until we get that advice, we are not in a position to grant you the permission to travel across. Two, if you take that risk and they arrest you, that is your business. If you take that risk and you have nowhere to rest and, and, and to sleep on your way to Cape Town, that is the risk you are taking. It, is, it will not be the parliament forcing you to be in Cape Town when, in fact, the conditions are such that you cannot go to Cape Town. And I think we should also remember the Western Cape is not isolated from the rest of South Africa. It's our province. It's a province in South Africa. Whatever happens there affects all of us. So whether the movements into and out of the Western Cape affect all of us and all of us are worried about it. The truth is, yes, the, the, the rate of infection seems to be high there right now. The spike is expected. It is also expected in the next few weeks to, to rise in the rest of South Africa. So let us consider this virus as a problem of South Africa, not a provincial problem, not a racial problem. Let us own up and say we are in it together and we must work together. So I would really be comfortable with leaders of parties who begin to think and work together in this difficult period to put South Africa first. Um, if there is any other matter on arising, then I must be told, I don't want to resuscitate this discussion on, on the relocation, on, on any, on the 40, 50, and 100. I want us to move forward. Is there any other matter, honorable members, you want to raise on matters arising? Or can we move? Let's move, honorable speaker. Let's move. Thank you, Thank you very much. We then move to item number five. The report by committee section. Committee section. Good morning, Madam Speaker, honorable members and colleagues. Morning, Our sir. report will focus on the few slides where there are updates. The first slide is slide number 10. On this slide, it is a bill before Portfolio Committee on Justice and Correctional Services. The committee has revised the program with a purpose to finalize the bill during the next term. The next slide is slide number 11. It is also a bill before Portfolio Committee on Justice and Correctional Services. The committee has also reviewed the program with the purpose to finalize the bill during the next term. The next slide is slide number 12. Slide number 12, it's also a bill again before Portfolio Committee on Justice and Correctional Services. The committee has revised the program with the view to deal with the matter during the next uh, term. The next slide is slide number 29.
on this slide, it is a treaty before Portfolio Committee on Justice and Correctional Services. The update on this slide is the committee is planning to finalize the treaty on the 29th of May. The next slide is slide number 30. It is also a treaty before Portfolio Committee on Justice and Correctional Service. The committee is planning to finalize the bill on the 29th of May. The next slide is slide number 32. It is a statutory appointment before Portfolio Committee on Communications. The committee has reviewed the days of interviews from the, the 26, 27, 28, and 29 of May, and the committee will finalize the deliberations on the 4th of June. This concludes our presentation, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable members, the floor is open. Honorable members, any takers? We accept the report, uh, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Swartz. Any second to the accepting of this report? I second, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Med Lakude. We move on to item number six, report by Bill's office. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Speaker. Uh, I cannot add to the report that uh, was submitted to NAPC last week and it was submit that was disseminated yesterday evening. I would like to, to say, though, that the Bill's office is involved in putting together and disseminating the daily ATC. And especially these days, it's important for us to make sure that we reach as many uh, clients and customers as we can. Thank you. Thank you. We being your clients and customers. Madam Speaker, you're our first and the most important customer, and so are all the members, but also um, lobby groups throughout South Africa and even abroad. Uh, um, and what's interesting is that sometimes when we send out uh, bulk emails with ATCs attached to them, they are then taken further from uh, from us and uh, disseminated to different groups further uh, across the country. So we reach quite a, a large number of uh, clients. Thank okay. you. On that point of clients, honorable members, the floor is open. Comments? There are no new additions. Speaker, the report is noted. And that is saying we note the report. Can we note the report, honorable members? Yes. Yes, honorable speaker. Thank you, ma'am. We now move to item number seven, Mema Jacke, the draft program. Uh, thank you, honorable speaker. Um, the In terms of the program as put on the screen, the framework still remain the same. Uh, we are now on week 14 of the program, Thursday, the 21st of May. Um, uh, today, there will be caucuses by political parties uh, and co oversight committees continue on strategic plans and uh, departmental performance plans. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, the 22nd of May, uh, oversight committees continue um, for the, uh, um, the work already articulated. Um, let's look at the 25th. Uh, per request from the office of the, uh, the, 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 the chief whip, uh, we have actually put in red pub debate on Africa Day um, between 9 and 18 hours, uh, because this is what will actually be taking place amongst the members of parliament of South Africa, uh, with uh, the 25th of May still continuing to be a constituency day. And then Tuesday, the 26th of May, um, it's continuation of committees on business as articulated. Wednesday, the 27th of May, 
between 9 and 12.45, committees will continue for businesses already articulated. At 10 o'clock, there will be Chief Whips Forum. At 15 hours, we'll have our uh, virtual plenary on questions. It will be from 15 hours to 18 hours for the two clusters on so social service and governance. Thursday, the 28th of May, 8.30, programming committee will continue. And then at 10 o'clock on Thursday, the 28th of May, we'll have Mati Party Women's Caucus. Um, and the committees will actually be continuing concurrently also um, for businesses already articulated. Friday, the 29th of May, committees continue for the same business. Like we have actually um, indicated, we keep on taking it a week in advance uh, because there's so much that is actually being aligned and realigned uh, to the extent that we try to avoid just to engage on the entire program all at once. Uh, but what needs to be noted is that there will not, as um, Honorable Frolik has actually articulated, there will not be mini plenaries anymore. So they are here in the program, but we know that uh, they will not be there anymore. Thank you. Uh, and also to note that the questions to the Deputy President, Honorable Speaker, will be on the 24th of June. It's a proposal. Uh, we have not secured a date yet for the questions to the uh, President. We are working on it. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. It is a proposal, or have you confirmed the 24th of June with um, the Deputy President? It has not been uh, confirmed yet. It's a proposal. So, so it's a slot that it, we have it looking comes from at. Us or it comes from them. Uh, it comes from us, uh, Honorable Speaker, because we have not actually ma managed to get any confirmation from them. So in the meantime, tentatively, we have put that date. Okay. Okay. Honorable Members, the floor is open. Speaker. Honorable Mazzoni. Honorable Singh. Honorable Mazzoni. Julius. Mkalipi. Mkalipi. Okay, Mkalibi. Okay. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. May I proceed? Yes, please. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, just a few questions. I think for the 25th of May, it needs to be made clear that we will not be participating in any of those debates. It's a debate for the Pan African Parliament, but it's for us to note, unless I am mistaken. But the way Honorable Majake said it, I'm still not clear. You know, whether we are participating or, you know, uh, whether it's Pat that's having their own debate. I, I think the other one was the omission of the 17th of June, uh, which is Youth Day. Uh, and then uh, lastly, my, my distinct recollection and impression is that the 24th was confirmed for the Deputy President. And I just need some clarity, possibly, from the councillor to the president in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sin. Mema Zoni? Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, Madam Speaker, indeed, I was also under the impression that the 24th had been confirmed for the deputy president. But as well as, um, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a rule that says how many times the, the deputy president needs to appear before parliament. And we must be very careful that that rule is very strictly adhered to. But given the fact that the deputy president's council is on this, on this particular forum and call with us, I trust he'll be able to give us a, a firm answer. Um, and also with regards to... Uh, uh, the president answering questions in the house. I think we also need to look very closely at uh, when that is going to to be happening to ensure that we have full accountability of the executive uh, to the house. Thanks, Madam Speaker. Thank you, ma'am. The Honourable Julius. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, mine is just to uh, make a proposal for the few for future uh, uh, appearances of the deputy president and the. President, we seem to have a problem with consultation, uh, securing dates for, for, for the president, deputy president, to, to answer questions in the House. My proposal is that the consultations made by anyone, any committee, 
to the president and deputy president be made available to this committee in writing in future so that we can see for ourselves when we made the proposal, was it three months before? When did we give them the dates? What was the responses and how far we are? Just like we have progress reports on anything, we need to have progress reports on consultation or securing dates, whatever you might want to call it, uh, on these questions to the deputy president and the president. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. The Honorable Mukhalipi. Honorable Mukhalipi, unmute. Oh, sorry, Speaker. The role of the councillors, both to president and deputy president, I should think that is to get uh, information, first-hand information, because I was also uh, observing you, Speaker, asking the programming whip to say that did they confirm or we are still consulting. I thought that the programming whip will make sure that she does do the program, of which that uh, the deputy president and the president must appear to the program. Yesterday on the Chiefs Forum, we also debated along to these two issues to say that it must not look like we are begging the executive. We are not begging the, the president, we are not begging the deputy president to come and account. So the programming we must make sure that according to the program of parliament, she must feature them and also those two councillors, they must help in terms of the information. We must not come here at a programming, programming committee and also found wanting to know if they are confirming, if they are not confirming, if they are talking, if they are not talking. So we must come here to know what exactly are the dates for the both of them to come and be accountable to Parliament. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Mentlangwin. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. And I fully agree with um, M. Uh, Kalipi. We can't be found uh, wanting, Speaker. Um, the Deputy President and the President have a constitutional mandate to address us as Parliament. And we need to, it's up for us from this side as well, to finalize the dates to come to us as and come and address us and answer questions in Parliament. So we need a clear indication from the um, programming whip and the Council of, of the President and the Deputy President on these dates. And I want to agree with Honorable Julius that, <clears throat> sorry, for the in writing that we we don't uh, talk of things that is in the air there must be a letter accompanying that that we have seen that um, they were requested to 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 come and address us in parliament and then secondly uh, speaker i just want to check maybe mr frawley can uh, give me um, that answer why is the international relations committee not sitting uh, because I have regret requests from uh, my member in this committee. They haven't had a, a, a committee sitting yet. Thank you. Um, Deputy Chief Whip. Deputy Chief Whip. Mayor Lakude. Have we lost? Seems like yeah, she left honorable speaker. She's losing her connection. Connectivity okay. speaker. It's a problem. Okay. Maybe um, it's a problem. Okay. Madam Speaker, we have connected. Madam Speaker, we have Mr. Pop. We have Mr. Pop who wishing to respond. Dr. Frolic. Yes, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, you may go ahead. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Just uh, in terms of the last question that was asked, there is a full program for the International Relations Committee to sit as from next week. There were certain problems within the uh, presentation of the uh, strategic plans and also the performance plans and other matters that I wish not to discuss here around the DG and other senior staff in their department, but they will meet from next week. And then secondly, Speaker, of course, given the decision that has been taken today that there won't be any mini plenaries, will have a profound impact on the program as we move into June. We are in discussions with the National Council of Provinces to look at their timelines in terms of finalizing their discussions around 
the div division of revenue bill, and it could well be that the items that we agreed on today will feature prominently from the first week of June, and that is the debate that must take place uh, on the division of revenue appropriation bill and also the declarations of votes. But we will work with the programming whip after this meeting. And by next week's Chief Whips Forum, there should be an updated proposed program. Thank you. Member Jacket, do you wish to come in? Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yes. Um, on the issue of the PAP and on the issue of the 24th, the question session for the DP. And also on the issue of the youth day. Um, yes. To say that on PAP, uh, Chief Whip actually indicated that she just wishes this to be on the program, uh, but it's not going to be a, 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 a South African uh, a parliament program. It's a PAP program with our own members of parliament participating. That's how she put it to me when mm -hmm. she actually requested uh, that we put it in the in the program. And then um, in terms of the 24th, I don't know whether Honorable Papa wants to say something, but like I've indicated, this is still a proposal. Um, we will continue to work with the office so that they actually finalize as to whether the date is suitable. If it's not suitable, what is it that is actually being suggested? And the, the youth day uh, will have made room for it for the 17th of June. That's the Youth Day debate. That's the proposal. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Take the floor. Um, uh, good morning, uh, Speaker, and to members. Uh, we, we, we indicated to the Chief Whips Forum yesterday that there were dates confirmed for the last quarter of the financial year and the first quarter. And the second um, uh, and, and the first quarter of this financial year, but because of the what has happened, the dates had to be changed. So the programming we did indicate that there's an engagement uh, with the presidency on both the session for the the day for the deputy president and the president, and indicated that hopefully next week there will be confirmations. And I, we are watch, just uh, looking at that proposal, also engaging with the the president, because there has to be some form of a sequence. So we hope that uh, by the time the Chief Whips Forum meet, the dates will be confirmed, hopefully for the uh, for both president and deputy president. She did indicate yesterday that it will only be confirmed next week after having received the request from parliament to confirm the dates. Now that the old ones, which were confirmed um, with the office of the speaker and the chair of the National Council of Provinces are no longer applicable. Uh, can we just go back off? to the basics? One, until my office gets confirmation from either the presidency or the deputy president's office, we will not have something that says we have consulted. We have not had anything in writing between the president, deputy president, and my office. And that is why I was asking the, the, the member Jackie about that. Um, if you do things informally, you put us to where Ndate Julius is putting us today. Where he now says we want to see those letters, those letters will be between the president's office and my office, and we will bring them in the way systematically, the way things must be done. So I'm simply saying, uh, Mema Jake, don't put provisional dates which have not been confirmed on the, on the, on the, on the, on the program, unless we have indicated ourselves that this date is definitely on, it is confirmed, and so on. There is an office called the Leader of Government Business, which liaises not only on the sitting days, but on any other business between the executive and ourselves. So I would say that that, that will be it. We will come back to programming when the deputy president and the president have confirmed these four questions. But we must also be fair. I know that the unease and uh, amongst the members of the programming committee today is that we had dates for the deputy president, but which we did not keep be simply because at the particular time the deputy president was in. 
And we all know why he was ill. It is not a secret. Now, we must always take things case by case. We have spoken to the office to say, how do we rescue those questions which should have been addressed at the time when the deputy president could not help being sick? So members, it, it must not be that when something happens now, we, we forget the history. We forget the actual reasons why certain things did not happen the way it should have happened. But I want to apologize to you. We will not give you provisional dates which have not been confirmed at, at programming again. Members, is there anything else outside this that we wish to deal with under the program? Honorable Speaker, Honorable Frolik here. Yes, Mr. Frolik. Just to um, inform the meeting that um, the international relations, in fact, is having their first meeting this evening from 6 to 9 p.m. Thank you, Dr. Mulder, for bringing that to my attention. Thank you. Thank you. mute. Thank you very much. This Muted is... chair. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Can we uh, not have any announcements, honorable members? My announcement would be that we all keep safe and we continue to make sure that around our households, our communities, and nationally, we keep on encouraging South Africans to be safe, to stay alive. Is there any member who has an announcement? None. I therefore announce that this meeting is closed. Thank, Thank you, you Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Stay safe, stay well. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you, family. Bye-bye, Madam Speaker. Bye-bye. Thank you, Maya. All of this. Hi, Tep. Tep Piso. He's on mute. Yeah. Hi, Andrew. How did it go? Hi, Andrew. How did it go? I know you did well. Very well. We tried. <laughs> yeah. It's not uh, easy. I see Sam is still here. Yeah, we are just uh, waiting for everyone to leave. <laughs> I know I know Sam needed to leave by 10 o'clock. No, so not anymore. It, it was exactly 10 o'clock eh, when they finished. That one yeah, o'clock. 10, 10 yes. o'clock. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for my doctor's call because he said I don't have to come in. He's going to, it's going to be a telephone consultation. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. No, that makes sense. 
Yeah, it was a bit, bit long, but yeah. Yeah, yeah so now it's just a wet now. What is left? Okay.